back to another video as part of our psychology course. A big debate in the whole field of psychology is reductionism versus holism. Reductionism and holism are two opposite ends of a spectrum and we can use both of them to examine human behaviour. Reductionism is the idea of explaining something according to its basic parts or the simplest explanation. By being a reductionist, we can investigate what causes a behaviour. For example, if we think that aggression is caused by a certain gene, we can test for that gene and find out if a person with the gene behaves more aggressively than someone without it. This could be said to be overly simplistic though, and most people's behaviour is a result of more than simply having a certain type of gene. Holism is the idea that we should try to explain something by looking at all of its parts. Many different factors determine our behaviour. Aggressive behaviour could be caused by genetics, but also the environment a person has grown up in, their cultural background, their mood at the given time, the weather, the list goes on. So a holistic explanation of behaviour would look at multiple interacting causes, not just one. Think about a student report card. Sam tries hard in every class, arrives punctually and never misses a lesson. He works well with other students and loves taking an active role in group projects. His enthusiasm sparks joy in those around him and he makes every effort to achieve his goals. Sam's made huge progress since the start of the year. This is a holistic description that tells the reader about the student's attitude and progress. This approach might tell me why Sam is succeeding or failing academically. Sam, predicted grade four. This is a reductionist description of the student. A predicted grade of four doesn't tell me if Sam's making an effort or achieving his full potential. And it doesn't tell me if he's getting better or worse. It doesn't tell me anything about the impact on other learners around him, but that's okay. A reductionist approach is useful if I wanted to compare 200 students, or even if I want to compare all the students in the country. So reductionism is useful if I want to make comparisons. Both reductionist and holistic approaches have their uses. It just depends on the kind of information you're looking for. In GCSE psychology, the reductionism and holism debate falls under the issues and debates section in the memory topic. So you need to understand reductionist and holistic approaches to studying memory. The multi-store model of memory is a reductionist approach to understanding memory. It suggests that memory can be simplified and broken down into different stores, each with its own characteristics and processes. It tells us that if we rehearse something, it will move from our short-term memory to our long-term memory. It doesn't consider mood or emotion though. It doesn't explain why you might rehearse the script of a play over and over and over again, but when you're standing on stage in front of a big audience, you simply can't remember the words. Peterson and Peterson reduced memory down to the recall of nonsense trigrams. XGP, VTN, SBQ. But their methods were criticised for being too reductionist. Memory doesn't occur in a vacuum. There are so many things that can affect whether or not you will remember something. Bartlett's theory of reconstructive memory is more holistic. Bartlett said that memory is not like a recording. A person's past experiences, their culture, their schemas, all have an impact on how and whether they remember something. You and your friends might all go on a trip and you might all remember the trip differently depending on the life experiences you'd had until that point. Let's test your knowledge. Where do these missing words go? Pause the video now and fill in the gaps. Let's have a look at the correct answers. Bartlett's study takes a more holistic approach by focusing on the active role of individuals in reconstructing and interpreting memories. 
It highlights the influence of social and cultural factors on memory formation, which goes beyond a reductionist perspective of memory as a simple storage system. The debate rages on. In the reductionist corner, we have Peterson and Peterson, who say we should look at memory through its structural components, like those in the multi-store model. And in the holism corner, we have Bartlett, whose theory of reconstructive memory says we should look at many interacting factors, like culture and an individual's past experiences to understand how their memory works. Both reductionism and holism have their place in understanding how our memories work. Well, I hope this has been useful. I'm Kate with MVA. Thanks for watching.